Well, hello, Kingsmen. Welcome back to another glorious battle. We have a 4v4 in Napoleon Total War 3. Uh, mod for Napoleon Total War. If you are new to my channel or new to this mod, welcome. I hope you uh, stick around for a very awesome battle. This one was sent in by Steely Dan playing as not France, but America here, the seven pointer. Um, and this looks from the stats to be a very close, very bloody battle with quite a lot of, well, obviously by the, by the term bloody, I do mean death. Not wounding, not casualties, unless they're dead casualties, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, guys, so, uh, you know, get your, uh, drinks and get comfortable. I got my coffee, which I probably will forget about as the battle intensifies, always happens, and I hate anything but hot coffee anyway enough about me more about these factions so we have like i said a seven point usa a eight point e france egypt so they're bringing some like camels which actually wow look at these guys these guys look very dignified <laughs> i don't know that's just that's just a picture isn't it the camel just looks oh man all right well anyway uh, yeah, and then 11 point uh, France um, actually bringing a couple of the Imperial Guard units has two of the Chasseurs and uh, They do have the Le Doux Grenadier Cheval, which is, is some heavy deadly Cav So hopefully they'll want to do something C4 my favorite class of heavy cav is a C4 Just the right amount of pack a punch along with speed um, and they are going up against, oh, did I mention this one? Yeah, eight point Espana, France. Uh, they're going up against two Prussias, a Sweden and a Portugal. Now, if this is a custom army Portugal, it is a seven pointer, I think. Um, I'm assuming it's either nine or a 10 pointer for the Prussians and Sweden, I think is, uh, it's an eight, nine or seven. Honestly, don't remember. Maybe it's a nine. Um, but yeah, this should be a good battle. Prussia now is, uh, you can see, scouting up this way, sending Cav over. He's getting his, uh, Egypt's getting his small. <laughs> these guys are not dressed for these conditions at all. I mean, they look like they're, actually, they look like they're dressed well for these conditions. I mean, it's probably a little humid, a little hot, I'd imagine. Um, let's see, Prussia has some Dragoons here, it looks like, um, and uh, some Hussars. Just pushing up, just two of them. Um, this whole army, Espana, just stretched along the entire front here. Oh, this is Missile Cav. Little cheeky shots here. Oh, they better run. Like right now. Did they lose one? Yeah, they lost one. They're gonna try to take revenge here. Oh, is this gonna be Order 66 on these poor cavalry units? Oh, the artillery, I, oh. I would order them to stop and then pour a volley in here. Looks like he's just going to keep advancing. Anyway, over on this side, the U.S. and uh, France pushing up on the right flank here, probably trying to get some some territory, maybe from the coalition. The coalition all spawned right in this area. So, uh, you know, not a uh, bad thing to grab as much land as possible, especially with your cavalry. Um, get a good position and get LOC. So they're going to push up. I mean, the hills aren't that terrible, but there is, you can notice, a slight slope here. Something about artillery placement, which we talked about on Sunday stream, which, by the way, if you want more of those, just let me know. Um, I plan on doing more, but, you know, it's good to know if you guys are actually enjoying them, um, which, if you haven't watched it, go please watch if you want to uh, learn more. I had some really knowledgeable people in that stream uh, talking about builds and what you want to bring with each build, and I'm going to do more. And like I was saying, back to what I said before, is zoom in and look at the ground when you're deploying your artillery. See if there's any hills in the way, any obstructions. Um, nothing happening still. Story, I'm not missing anything. Uh, for instance, with artillery, if you put them right here, it's obvious you're going to hit the hill. You know, you're not going to see anything. You'd want to move them. Like, say you put them right here, though, uh, about right here. You can fire along this whole range, and you're good. I mean, you want to hit over there, so I'd probably move them up even more. Maybe right here. You have a good field of fire along the entire side. Oh, it's so awesome. You can hear the trumpets, see horses going. It's an open field. Love it. Now, it looks like the majority of the Imperials, minus 8 point France, um, is rolling this direction. So you have the 8, 11, and uh, 7 pointers all going in this direction and leaving one 8 pointer to defend the left flank. I don't know if Prussia is going to move that way with their troops. 
Um, maybe they're going to meet up on the other side of the river. Or this lake, I guess. It would be a lake. Has a little island in the middle. Just set an artillery piece, a fixed artillery piece right here. I wonder if you could. If it was about, like one artillery piece, set it right here. And just fire and no one can get to them. That would be awesome. I would love to see that. But maybe I start this too early because it looks like the coalition is not really moving. I'm going to fast forward here. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, what someone I was talking about, you know, I have time. No one's doing anything yet. Um, I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to do something every month um, with builds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to play, and I only play on Saturdays, so like two games. So it shouldn't get too boring for me. Um, like, for instance, right now I am playing um, Russia 9-pointer. I saw some Prussians here, definitely. So we're starting to see Prussia up here meeting the French. But what I was saying before is I was playing Russia 9-pointer. Okay, hold on. Maybe I can't talk about this right now. Because there's a lot of Swedish troops pushing up here. Uh, USA trying to surround them. Uh, you got to remember that most of the Swedes can form square. So uh, is he going to do something cheeky here? Try to uh, sneak charge? Now nah, they're going to form square. Yeah, they form square. A good way to tell if they're about to form square, guys. If you charge and they just stop. And then they start doing... They guarantee you they're probably forming square. Um... Here we got Portugal pushing up here, so they definitely are seeing the coalition. Uh, you know Prussia's holding here. Ooh, they're getting a volley off here. They killed one. One of the Dragoons here, but they're going to form up here and keep moving. The first shots, although I think some skirmishers may have fired over here. First real shots of this combat, and uh, they're going to push up, try to drive back this cavalry. Um, not a bad idea to have Sweden's infantry pushing up that can all form square. Some of the Portuguese can form square, but not all of them. Especially when it comes to the line infantry here. Now, I like that he's bringing the light to infantry. These guys are really good. Form squares with good accuracy, fast reload skill. And yeah, the Swedish are just pushing back this cav. I mean, not taking out a ton of them, but, you know, they're getting a couple every time they volley. Over here, you can see skirmishers have moved up. Um, they are shooting. Now, hopefully, Prussia has some cav to defend their skirmishers. Otherwise, this is going to be awful. Yeah, his skirms are dead. That was a beautiful charge. You got it. You got to keep... Now, you can see they are going to get... Oh, my gosh. Prussia just volleyed this Dragoon unit, and now they're going to charge it. And you can see Prussia is everywhere here. Artillery is set up on both sides. Basically in the same place. 12 Panders versus... Ow. Did artillery kill this artillery piece? I think they got the first shot off the artillery and unfortunately broke um, the French artillery, which is unfortunate. Um, so France definitely needs to take the initiative in attack here. And artillery is really blasting their way through this. This is a bad... This is bad. It's like, France is going to have their artillery or their cav obsoleted unless they can deal with this artillery piece. Now, this may be a suicidal charge. Let's see it from their perspective here. They're going to get a volley by line infantry. This is a waste, in my opinion. They should not do this. They're going to get shot by Prussians, too. Oh, this is death. This is death, guys. This is this is not something you do. These guys are going to start dropping so fast. Oh, my gosh. They are losing so many men. Don't charge directly into artillery that's lined with infantry that have not really been firing. That's a bad idea. So what France is going to have to do is probably get their, artil their cav up on the flank because their cav is going to be sitting duck. Now, let's go over here and see what's happening here. So we have some uh, American skirmishers. Oh, Dan, I'm not surprised you brought skirms. This is the Steely Dan, the one who sent it in to me. And he always brings skirms. Always. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that in a bad way that he brings skirms. I just, I played against him, and his skirms were always a pain in my butt. I hated it. <laughs> skirms can be well played if you, if you do the right thing. Now, I think France, oh, man, they lost some good cav there. I mean, not so good cav there, but they lost some good dragoons, unfortunately. Um, and Prussia seems to be the best here. I The one concern I see here, France has no reserves whatsoever. Um, and 
they are pretty fast compared to I mean they have L3s I guess so they're the fastest moving army but I would almost fall back I would go back around here and let Prussia chase I don't know I, I'm curious what they're gonna do so they're in advance here they're gonna peel their reserves so good peeling reserves over oh man look at the masses here guys there's a lot of infantry cavalry wow just okay my computer is like yeah no we're not gonna render all these troops this is impossible yeah it was it was fun to, ooh there we go not glitching out there but that's a lot of troops here that are marching forward look at this wow but France is um attacking I guess Prussia seems in a very good place. I like the troops they brought. So Prussia, they even have some grenadiers. Like they have a very good army. This looks like Prussia 10. I think it's the Prussia 10 over here. Uh, just based on the troops I'm seeing. But France is going to engage them. Now, France maybe could win this, but I mean, they have some pretty small units compared to Prussia. I guess it's going to come down to how good their stats are and how fast they can drop the Prussians. Um, this battle seems to be all on its own. But Prussia has some good reload skills. Like, they can reload pretty fast and fire pretty fast, so you got to watch out as uh, France. And you see Prussia is advancing on this side here, so they are definitely okay with taking the fight to france now france is going to stay on the defensive on this section of the battlefield here ready to pour in some volleys here i wouldn't do this cavalry for prussia is oh my gosh they are going to die i don't know why they keep charging right by the prussian artillery that is such a no-no they should have gone this direction and charged the flank. I mean, this artillery... Uh, man, that's two 12-pounders right there, guys. And now guess who's on the flank? You have a general who's going to meet some dragoons. Now, hopefully, they can stop them. Oh, he's going to be able to stop them, but... Man, he's shaking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, France could start losing on this side. Oh, thank goodness. They saved their general. Clutch save. That was a dangerous game that uh, France was playing. You can see, though, they actually they are starting to win the line infantry fight. Um, if, honestly, if they're general, uh, I bet your artillery is shooting at the general. Russia trying to snipe the general and has broken it, but has not killed the general. But still, going for a gen snipe there, which is not against the rules whatsoever. Just some people don't do it because you know they feel like they have like this is that that's a me. I don't I don't snipe generals. I don't. It's just a uh, just how I play. And I wouldn't say that people that snipe generals are wrong. They're just dishonorable. Dishonor on that. No, just kidding. <laughs> it, it, it's a viable strategy. You knock out the general, you can cause the morale to waver. Now, thankfully, the general came back. Quite honestly, I would keep him far away. Here, I would keep him like way to the side here. Um, but, oh man, these guys are shaking, probably because their general wavered. Um, Prussia is doing much better now that they have reserves, so France looking pretty messy here. Things are not looking too good. Honestly, these 12 panels should be focusing on this line. Uh, France needs to fall back, recuperate their morale here. Over on this side, doing quite well here. Um, yeah, definitely keep pushing this attack. And uh, push your infantry back on this side. Get your general. Maybe maybe run him along the side of the river here where the slope is down and they can't get hit by artillery. But it is rough when all you have, when you're trying to just keep your general alive and the enemy's just basically trying to hit your general constantly. So here, USA is just pushing up. In fact, I think what well, I would not be surprised they're going to do here is a mass of infantry and cavalry here and with france pushing behind use usa as a meat shield here and you can see they are going to go in and i bet you these marines these other necks could charge the square here yep there we go and they're going in here 
and Sweden has some terrible morale when it comes to mass routing and also their melee stats are pretty awful. But the USA is going to start forming up on this square here. Probably start swinging around the flank trying to cut off um, Sweden. And if they got Sweden to break, well, they could cause Prussia to fall back. And you see Prussia and the French both um, having units breaking on both sides. So the general is way in the back. But yeah, you see USA is pushing up here, getting closer. France is pushing forward some assault columns. When you see this, guys... You pull back your line. You leave a couple troops. Like, I would pull back from here and pull back. I would leave these three and pull back and start running. Don't stand and fight. You run and let your allies maybe try to cut in here and um, save you because, oh my god. Okay, wow. This is... That's blobby. That is definitely a blob. You see that? That's a lot well, of units charging here, Hustle so... Uh, that's a blob, guys. I hate to have to say it, but you can't have that many units charging one line of your unit. So France is doing a little blobbing. Eight point Egypt. Oh my gosh, it's happening again. What is going on here, France? <laughs> what is going on here? Poor Sweden's just getting like destroyed by too many Imperial units. This is... That's kind of bloody. Now you can see that Russia has charged in with a cav, and they're just breaking, breaking the French using their uh, line infantry. Let's let's see. They had some. Oh yeah, some cavalry guard maybe. And France is in shambles. So Prussia will be able to make a decisive win here, and then push over where France is just charging in here. And you can see they are just starting to really break Sweden quite rapidly here. <clears throat> We've been here almost 20 minutes. And this fight definitely seems to be, I mean, even, honestly. Prussia just totally won against France. Sweden's gone. Uh, but France is gone on this side as well. You can see they have just mass broken. Oh, my gosh. The bayonet charged with the cavalry support. They just charged in here. Prussia may make a decisive the win. Of fatigue, sir, I, must rest a I would send this cab and chase down France to make sure they don't come back. But Prussia now is going to be able to shift over and try to assist on this side here. While, uh, where's the other Prussian army? So you see France is pushing forward on the flank here. Has uh, Ledu about to do a decisive charge against Price Portuguese at Form square. Okay, so they all form square, but still a messy charge here. Um, the rest of the Portuguese trying to hold this flag. They have artillery up on the side, on the on the hill. Oh, this is rough. This is rough. Portugal. I mean, France is doing what they do best, which is bayonet charge. This may be a very short battle, guys. So apologies if that's the case. Um. Yeah. That's rough. I mean, France is looking a little disorganized here. This is a blob. But here we go. We have... See, this is acceptable. I think you can have max of two units bayonet at charge. France over here is playing fairly. Not blobbing up. They have infantry now behind. And Portugal is going to try to get themselves out of there. Now, where's the rest of Russia? A huge cap fight over here as well. There's so much happening everywhere here. Um... We have some Dragoons going to charge the American uh, Adams Dragoons. Mississippi Adams, as well as some, uh, what is this? New York 8th Dragoons. Now there's going to be a flanking charge by some French Dragoons trying to support the U.S. comrades in arms here. And they're going to break the Prussians. I don't know where... Our men are running, so this is the 9-point Prussia right here, guys. And I don't know why. Maybe they were mobilizing and they just were in the far back. And these are very slow-moving units. Um, but it looks like, uh, unfortunately, the coalition has been defeated piecemeal. This has been a piecemeal victory. So Sweden fell, then Portugal. All the Portugal has managed to get some of their units um, over. And they have some nine-pounders, I bet, just sitting here firing here. So we'll see what they can do. That's a lot of French advancing on them. Uh, Got to watch out for these uh, Portuguese, though. If they can shoot you in the face, they could cause you to break. Like they have some more lion infantry here, some militia. 
going to be sent in. They were hold in reserve. Um, France is uh, going to now start attacking the Prussians. Now, there's also a Prussia over here. Um, advancing on the flank. France, I think, is going to try to ignore it. There's some Swedish troops that have come back. They're going to try to ignore it while it looks like Prussia is going to... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah Fran France is dead. <laughs> they have gotten obliterated by Prussia. <laughs> there's no units even to run away. Here we go. It looks like a Portuguese cab fight here. Portuguese cab is meh. Um, as you can see, not holding up very well. They did get a flank, but it's not going to matter. They are going to try to hold this hill with their artillery. Um, Prussia is starting to advance here. Oh, they're going to get hit by cavalry because they can't form square. Maybe they can get some volleys up here, but you got to watch that flank. I would even pull my lines back to, to like here. So as to not have Cav sitting on that flank. As you can see, the bayonet charges are going to start up here with the Cav keeping these guys stuck. And they're just going to constantly be advancing here. Just constantly bayonet charging in. Let's see if they... Uh... Yeah, the, uh, Prussia's going to just start caving. Once they mass route, guys, it'll be a mass route. Even though they have so many troops... Oh, they are getting it shot to pieces as they made it charged. All Let's see if Prussia can up. hold the flank here or hold the side here. Uh, Portugal still trying to hold against uh, the 11 point France. Let's see what Prussia can do here. If they have some good reserves, they could push up here. But oh man, the amount of, the amount of reinforcements pushing up. It's just constant. And Prussia should be getting out of there right now. They are just standing there. I don't think that's very wise of them. And they brought a lot of infantry, but I mean, they're just going to be getting hit by morale debuffs. Now, look, let's see what Prussia is going to not attack here. Unfortunately, it's just, oh, there's a cav fight here. Dragoons holding back the U.S. cavalry. But you can see France is just, the U.S. and France just pushing forward assault columns. It's just getting messy now. But honestly, I'm surprised my computer hasn't crashed yet with how many troops are in this one small area. Good grief. The amount of troops in this one small area. It's like a medieval battle here. Oh, this side, it looks a little more organized. A bunch of troops just firing back and forth. Um, Portugal still trying to hold this line here, trying to defend against uh, the cavalry and maybe defend their general. Uh, Prussia, oh Prussia. They are just getting everything destroyed here. The men are fatigued, sir, I must rest a while. Unfortunately, it's just, they, if they were all together, guys, if, if the coalition had stayed together, they may have won, or at least had a better fight. Um, here we go, the U.S. charging in, bayonet charges. Um, Portugal definitely not going to do too well against that. Uh, it's just chaos here. Uh, cavalry going to charge the backs, maybe take out this artillery piece. And you can see the massive amount of Russians that are just mass routing. Oh, the U.S. had some breaking probably just because they've been trying to bayonet charge so long that Russia actually is standing and shooting. Um, and that's causing quite a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage here. The entire unit is dead, sir. Yeah, this is rough. Even a counter bayonet charge here. Um, trying to break some of the U.S. Prussia over here is pushing on a very weak... <clears throat> excuse me. A very weak flank here. Cavalry charge in the back of this land. Lundwehr. I think it's actually say Land Lundwehr. It's a land, it's Landwehr. Landwehr. But anyway, uh, Portugal's basically uh, had disappeared. This, I mean, the amount of shots probably fired. I guarantee you the majority of the shots fired is from the uh, coalition. I feel like the bayonets used to be more. It's bayonets versus bullets. And the coalition, I mean, this is actually how most, most battles go. If the coalition can shoot enough, 
um, then they will win. If the Imperials can bayonet charge for... enough, they will win. And I think that's definitely the case in this battle. Bayonets over bullets. Uh, I think that's what's helping out this fight here. Over on this side, definitely more shooting. Enemy general has been slain, the Prussian general, which is probably gonna just cause more panic in the ranks as Prussia is gonna start slowly just caving. Um, Portugal is basically gone. Oh man. You, that's actually, I just have a lot of troops left. And I just not have a lot at all. Portugal still holding on as best as they can. They sent some cavalry in. Actually, wow, they are pushing back the French a little bit. Not by much. And there's some French reinforcements that are probably going to push over here and try to help out. But Portugal is actually maybe going to last longer than their for their uh, Prussian ally. Who's this? Some grenadiers. Egyptian grenadiers here. Our men are running for. With a back charge, I think Russia is about to break entirely. And it's going to be up to this Prussia to maybe do some damage here. Um, yeah, and France doesn't need to really take this fight, so they're probably going to fall back. Artillery really cutting into this Prussian line. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um, now, maybe, maybe Prussia will try to uh, shift troops over and help out this Prussia to have a one long line. Have a finally... Maybe with uh, the Imperials exhausted, they could actually shoot, outshoot the uh, Imperials. Because if you look, actually, there's not a lot of French troops left. Yeah, actually, France lost quite a bit. And the Portuguese the seem to be making some the sort of comeback here. Um, they're staying quite far away from the French here. You can see they are, they are falling back so they can just shoot. France can't close the gap. We do have some cavalry. I hope these charge instead of... Yeah. Charge the Grenadier Cheval. <clears throat> they don't have a general, so they're going to lose. But France and USA are all forming up. Prussia is still quite the danger, I would say. They have some really good reloading. I mean, they, they have really good line infantry here. Portugal holding on for dear life, although it seems a little bit more of an even combat here. And they have their best quality troops to be sure. I mean, they have the best troops. And uh, they're they're actually maybe going to be able to push up here and get some damage here. Well, we'll see. Um, this is probably the last phase of this fight. The showdown between a victorious Prussian army and the Imperials being victorious on their side as well. Artillery on both sides firing. Um, the thing is, Prussia is able to... Prussia should attack here. I guarantee you these guys are very tired, which means they're, yeah, they're exhausted. They're, these guys are fresh. They're winded. Um, but it is, in, I would say, the coalition's best interest to attack. I guarantee you this Prussian army is way more rested than the Imperials. They just had to march over here. They haven't been fighting. Um, they, and, and let me explain what I mean by why it's good to attack when they're not rested. If your men are exhausted or tired, they actually don't shoot as fast. They don't aim as well. Um, they will actually miss more of their targets. So these guys would be... And it uses a little bit of stamina to be obviously in in combat. Shooting and all that stuff. And these guys are exhausted. These guys are tired, winded. Uh, obviously these guys are probably are tired and winded as well. So not going to do too well. But Prussia should be attacking, in my opinion. And it looks like he is. Now the only problem is he's going to have a lot of artillery attacking him. He does have a lot of troops. So it may still be a unsuccessful attack. Um, hopefully Portugal is going to push up here and try to do their best to destroy, you know, some of this uh, flank here. France has some BP units here. They're trying to hold. As Prussia is going to push up, some grenadiers. These are some grenad some Prussian grenadiers here. Some of the line infantry. Here's some cavalry. We do have some artillery that's going to try to get a reload in before, uh, you know, before they get charged here. 
Oh, they're gonna get a shot off, boys. They are most certainly gonna get a shot off. It's gonna be too close to tell. Oh no, they didn't get it. Now they are getting shot. Prussia is getting shot by some skirms. That was so close. Um, uh-oh. These guys breaking could cause... Oh my goodness, Prussia managed to pull it through. And uh, now they're gonna go for all the artillery that was making it quite havoc for them. You see some Swedish troops have pushed up here. They are pushing up their reserves. Desperate, desperate last struggle here. Prussia trying to clutch this Our out. Men are running, sir. Uh, Prussia managed to take out that uh, artillery that was really a pain in their side. Hopefully, Portugal is going to push up here and try to, uh, if anything, push here and try to pinch this flank. They have an Ellos, or they have a building they can fight around. Um, like I said, I mean, the Swedish general is still alive. He has some troops left. They could really do some damage. I mean, the USA is going to try to maybe uh, surround this flank, potentially. I'll go around the flank here and uh, outshoot them just by sheer mass. Not quality, but quantity. Um, Prussia in the center now doesn't have artillery shooting at them. They have their own artillery, which is going to help even those odds. Uh, so things are looking a little better. And uh, Portugal, here they come. So France is going to have to peel some troops off to deal with this. After a decisive win, things have kind of calmed down and uh, the stakes. I definitely would say the Imperials made a decisive win in the beginning, but it was at a high cost. So they, they won the initial conflict, but I think it really took out a lot of their troops more than probably they wanted to. <clears throat> Maybe. Um, but yeah, these guys are tired. They should send up their fresh troops, which they are. These guys are fresh. These are active, fresh, fresh. So, you know, mostly their line is good. Um, all right, so they definitely don't look too terrible now. Those like they're going to try to go in for another bayonet charge, potentially. Cavalry charging in as well. Oh, they're getting shot as they charge in. And here we go, we got line infantry charge again, the 43, the 43rd. Um, trying to charge in, oh, they tried going for a flank here. And, uh, oh, the flanking shots, Prussia is pouring into the French here. Oh my goodness. And a counter charge by some Prussian grenadiers. And also a sh shooting in the flank here. This is really going to hurt France here, which is why they're throwing in more and more troops into this combat. Um, you can see they are having some troops breaking here. Prussia getting out of there wisely. Man, Prussia is playing very well here on that flank. Over here, oh, the Portuguese are dicing up the French here um, with their light infantry. The R Prussian general nearby is going to help these uh, grenadiers maybe hold. But these uh, pressure grenadiers not looking the greatest. Sweden is uh, trying to hold on their own, trying to make a comeback. Um, Prussia oh, broke man, on that side. Oh my goodness. Prussia actually doing not a terrible shabby job here. I mean, they are, they are really breaking. I mean, if they can break all of these troops here, I wouldn't send in my general maybe as Prussia, but you know, I guess whatever works. If you lose your general though, it's over. Some line of tree in with the general. Oh, can they hold here? Oh, Prussia had a massive break here with those grenadiers. Their general. Ah, uh, their general. That would cause Prussia to start collapsing. And I think he could have held, maybe. I don't know, guys. I think Prussia made quite the fight here, but I don't think it's going to work. They have more grenadiers on this side, but they are very depleted and very weak. If Portugal could get closer here before this fight ends, they maybe could help out here. Sweden's desperately holding on. I mean, they're desperately holding on. They have broken the Prussian center, and I think their left flank's about to collapse. Only a couple troops left here. Sweden maybe trying to hold by this LOC against the U.S. Don't know where Portugal is going to go. Maybe they're going to try to hold this four-pointer. I mean, they have 23 minutes still, so... I'm trying to get an LLC win at this point. It's too early in the Our game for that. Running, 
We got some bayonet charges going in here. And Prush is breaking. So they're going to send their infantry back, maybe closer to their artillery piece um, because they have broken. Oh, a building has been taken. Prussia took this LOC. The U.S. now going to have... Uh, they're going to have a tough time taking this LOC. There's a debuff with the LOC here. And I know that... Uh, guess who's way back in the corner here? Yeah, Prussia's probably just waiting... Yeah, look at that. They definitely have this LOC. Don't know why it was being shelled, though. Oh, you know what? They took it in the very beginning. That's why. Um, the Imperials took it in the beginning and they lost it. Probably Prussia sent the artillery and shelled it. I don't know. These 12-pounders are going to be doom for the Imperials if they attack. And the Imperials don't have a lot of troops left, but they have enough to take this 4-pointer and hold a 1-pointer, which they do have. Um, this one pointer right here, as you can see. Their general? <laughs> Their general is waiting probably till the very end to actually take it. Uh, so that the coalition doesn't push any troops up because Prussia is definitely closer to the one pointer. Oh, wait, what's this? We got some skirmishers pushing up. Oh, no, I would get an LLC. I went up there in a charge. I'd get an LLC and make them come to you. But either way, that's going to be bad. Um, the Coalition could win LSC victory unless they take this four-pointer, which I think I have faith that the U.S. can do it. They're sending in their Illinois volunteers. Go for it, boys. Um, he has plenty of uh, other line of tree. Just kind of hold on. Um, General as well. And this fight, yeah, it's going to start winding down. There's another one-pointer way over here. Um, the Portuguese seem to be the ones closer to that, though, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here, guys, because besides this fight, which I think, yeah, they can, they can take the four-pointer. So it's it's going to even out. So it's whoever has the one-pointer, and guess who's going towards the one-pointer. They're not going to win this fight. This general is not going to win. I think this is the eight-point España. Yep, he had his general left. So, you know, he's going to try to hold here. Uh, he's going to get executed by firing squad. The skirmisher is just going to shoot him. Oh, they've missed every shot so far. That's embarrassing. You guys going to kill him? There we go. What an unfortunate series of events. So, um, they've taken the four-pointer. So, it's a four-in-one-pointer versus... I mean, I don't know. There's, there's two more points out here. And, uh, okay, there's... It looks like a U.S soldier going to this one pointer so they're gonna make sure they have secured one the LOC because they're about to lose this one pointer they honestly honestly need to push out and take this one pointer too if they want to win by LOC victory instead of having it be a draw But anyway, I'm going to keep fast forwarding because nothing's happening yet although this building has fallen to the enemy yeah see they lost this LOC. Pity about losing the four-pointer in the way back, you know? Here we go. Last desperate stand, guys. The Prussians shooting. Now, I love playing the Prussians, so, you know, don't let's deter you from playing this Prussian. You just gotta play... Uh, you gotta you gotta anticipate bayonet charges, cab charges, um, maybe have an ally that's good at melee, like Russia. Which is actually what I've been playing more recently, which has been a lot of fun. Oh, the, I can go back to what I was talking about before, before I got interrupted and the battles calmed down. I'm going to be playing a faction a month. At the end of that month, um, I'm going to make a video about the faction. So, basically, it's my finding. It's not like a professional opinion about what you should or shouldn't do. It's just what i found has worked for me, what I like to do, like about the faction. The kind of builds I took and the kind of units that are in that build. And I'm going to do a faction a month. I mean, this will be a... It'll be a long series. So, um, probably another week after, like, next week, I'm probably going to do a Russia 9 build uh, video. And I'm just going to go over what I liked about the faction, 
the weaknesses and strengths, um, the best builds to take depending on the play style, if you're defensive, offensive, if you have good, strong melee um, allies or shooting allies. <clears throat> like for instance, one game as Russia 9, I had the UK and I had them sit on my flanks as light infantry. I tanked in the center, had my melee strong units on the flank to cover his um, UK line of tree and we just shot the French to pieces. And guess what happened when they charged with Cav? I just ran behind the UK squares. It worked beautifully. Um, but obviously there's weaknesses. If you're alone or don't have a lot of uh, ally factions that have squares, you're going to die to Cav. If the, if, if the enemy has Cav and knows how to use it, you are going to die. So just, just stuff like that. Stuff that hopefully um, I discover so that you guys can uh, already have your, you know, already have it in the back of your mind when you're planning on playing that faction or if you want to give it a try and say something in the comments about what you found works or doesn't anyway that that's kind of what I was meaning to talk about uh before the battle kind of started and everything just catapulted downhill from there looks like france is gonna to go to the other one pointer so they win this by lsc victory i'm just gonna fast forward as portugal is uh dying here i would just stand and fight at this point as as yeah I would just stand and fight. Here we got a cab charge here. These wow, those dragoons taking the cake. And the USA and France just trying to chop the up man of fatigue, sir. the Swedish general. I mean, Portugal looks pretty bad morale-wise. It's just basically a race to these other one-pointers. I mean, the USA just is going to take that. Um, they may even try attacking this LOC. We have taken a building, sir. Yeah, they took it. Just to make sure there's 13 minutes remaining and uh, maybe they can hold it. Now, we'll say they may actually try to assault this, this uh, one-pointer. Um, Portugal is, uh, well, he's going to just form up right here. Let the U.S. take on the Portuguese. Try wasting their time, which he's definitely doing. There's 12 minutes remaining. Quite honestly, well, you know, they're assaulting this one-pointer. They've almost made it to this one, but they're going to take on this one-pointer here. Let's let's just play here. That's right. You attack the guys outside the town or outside the house first before attacking the ones inside. So when you melee, click on the guys outside. Um, they should be able to take this, and that will definitely uh, give them the opportunity. Ooh, that's rough. You have to keep fast-forwarding here. Um, but yeah, um, once they take this, if, if nothing's happening, if it's just like, you know, sitting and just waiting, um, I may just skip to the very end so we can see the results. And it will be a French, yeah, it's going to be a French victory here. They have the majority of the LOCs. Um, they definitely have the field, so they have won both. Both of them. And uh, well played. I mean, they did some beta charges. Um, the initial one against Sweden was a little fishy. Besides that, though, definitely some good good plays there. You got to watch out for the Imperials when they mass up like that. When you see a lot of troops not lining up for a line fight, if you're like, wow, they're not going for a line fight, I'm going to win this, you should start being afraid. <laughs> Especially if the Imperials are massing up like that. They have lines upon lines upon lines of troops. Um, you got to watch out for a bayonet charge, and you got to either have cav or start pulling back immediately or, I don't know. We have killed their generals, sir. Now they must You need to be break. cautious. Play very cautiously here. All right, I'm going to skip to the very end, guys, and uh, we'll go over the stats of this fight. All right, guys, that was the battle. Now, um, as you can see, the kills were pretty gnarly. Actually, on both sides, minus Sweden, who got just clapped in the very beginning, unfortunately. Um, went in the Vicious Corporal as the eight-point France Espana got destroyed. They both got, got actually the same amount of kills, and they got destroyed pretty early on. Um... Wow, yeah, you can see uh, Steely Dan with 12, Travis with 16, Blitzer with 14, um, Hope as the 10-pointer, Prussia, the one that destroyed the 8-point Espana, I'm assuming, uh, with 2,000 kills, got the most kills out of everybody there. Then you got Lieutenant Gomez with 1,000, Jorf with 12, and then Sweden Child Soldier with 586. So... Uh, let's see who got the most kills here. So 21st line infantry. Not surprised there. Very good quality infantry. Um, who got the most experience? Yeah, the Dragoons and line infantry. So, <clears throat> yeah. Kind of curious who lost the most. 200 men. Eesh. Some heavy casualties there. All but one man out of that whole militia survived.
That's rough. That's really rough. <laughs> Imagine being the one man alive to tell the tale for your regiment. Anyway, guys, uh, that'll be it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, on a side note, for those of you who actually stay till the end of the video, which I'm not saying it's bad if you don't. Well, if you don't, then you guess you'd never hear this, so you wouldn't feel insulted. <laughs> but um, I have finished I finished the Fire Academy, so I'm going to make another video pretty soon here talking about what the new schedule is going to be like here in just a little bit. Because um, it's going to be a new schedule. New schedule, new video schedule, and uh, more videos than before, probably. But I'll explain that all in that video. So thank you all so much for supporting me during the Academy. It was uh, a rough, rough time, a lot of studying, a lot of... A lot of aches and pains from the metaphysical uh, training they put us through, but it, very worth it. And uh, I'm my channel has definitely continued to grow thanks to you all um, sticking around, even though I wasn't around as much. So really do appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, this is this has been a fun two years so far. So um, you guys just keep keep the uh, support coming because it is definitely appreciated. Alright guys, you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I will catch you all in another video.